is Five Minute Friday How Climbing a Volcano is Like Running a Business. Recently, I took my group of Adventure Quest attendees up Mount Batukaru, which is the second tallest volcano on Bali. Uh, it's about 3,000 meters or 9,000 feet. And we started early in the morning, uh, maybe eight o'clock. And it took us 10 hours and they actually said it's going to take you nine or 10 hours. And I thought, oh, that's for people that are out of shape or something like that. Well, it actually took longer than I expected. It was really, really challenging. We, we did, you know, more than a mile of vertical elevation up and down through several different types of jungle. The ecosystem changed four times on our way to the top. And it was one of the hardest physical things that many of the people attending Adventure Quest had ever done. And it was really hard for me as well, even though uh, I try to keep in really good shape. So this was a huge challenge that people undertook and no one got injured and we all made it back. We were using the lights on our phone. We got back to the van after dark walking through the jungle and the night sounds all around us. It was a truly epic day. And we spent some time that day thinking of analogies, how climbing this volcano could help us in our business. And what are some of the analogies? What are some of the ways that we could use this epic experience of accomplishing something so great, this feat to help us in our business, to give us courage and confidence and endurance and energy and grit and all of these things. So here are some of the analogies that we came up with. First is you can't, you can't get to the top. You can't achieve your goal if you don't start. You, you might plan and plan and think and have everything perfect, but until you actually take the van to the foot of the mountain or go out and try to get a customer or whatever it is in your business, you can't get to your goal if you don't start. So starting is the most important step, the first step and the last step. And there's all kinds of steps in between that you won't see. There's no way that you can see all the steps from the beginning to the top of the mountain, from starting a business to whatever your goal is, if it's financial goal, if it's a certain number of people that you're able to help or whatever your measurement is, you won't be able to see all the steps along the way and you'll discover them as you walk a hundred steps, then you see the next steps in front of you. And you have to have faith that there is a way, knowing that people have climbed the mountain before, knowing that there's a path. Um, so it's really helpful to have guides or coaches. We had three local guides who helped us. Uh, they, they even identified things like Oh, here's some wild ginger or turmeric, or here's some edible ferns, different plants. Um, there's a spring with drinking water that you could fill up a water bottle. So they knew the route. They had climbed the volcano before, and it was helpful to have this them along. Uh, just like having a coach or a mastermind is helpful in business. And the power of the group, the the wisdom of the group, but also the encouragement uh, at different times along this volcano trek, everyone went through a high point and a low point where they were encouraging others or needed encouragement from other people, whether it was physically they were getting tired or they twisted an ankle, which only happened very lightly. Nobody was really injured. We didn't have to carry one down off the mountain, which was, thank goodness, right? Because you never know if something's going to go wrong on a really big adventure. So having friends there and peers to encourage you and go through something together is so important in business as well. And as we all experience this together as a, as a team, as a unit, we grew closer. It was a, a vulnerable experience for us all to be struggling up this giant mountain together. And so we actually built better connections in our relationships. And uh, the same in business, when you're working really hard on something with a team or peers or your employees or whoever, it can bring you much closer together. We noticed how much of a mental game climbing this volcano was. 
Uh, it's important, right? One's foot in front of the other. That's a physical game, but it's also a mental game. Like, what are you saying to yourself when your quads are aching and you're getting hungry and you're out of water and you know you have an hour until you get to the spring to refill? What are you saying to yourself? Are you saying one foot in front of the other? Are you saying, I can do it? I've done hard things before. This self-talk and the grit that you're noticing within yourself is important for a difficult and challenging journey. And just like in business, when things are hard, who you are and what you're saying to yourself in those challenging moments define how the outcome is. If it's, if it's what you want or if you don't show up 100%, then you're not going to be as high performing in your business. Now, there were times on this volcano where we were slipping in the mud. There were steep cliffs on both sides of the trail. We're crawling through tunnels of briars. And you really have to trust your sense of balance, your own strength, your physical abilities. And trusting yourself in business is is really important. So many people suffer from imposter syndrome, or they say if they only had more courage, they could be more successful. Well, you have a lot of skills and abilities and talents and experience that you can rely on in business. Of course, you're going to be learning new skills to help your business grow even more, but you need to trust the background, the backlog of all these things that you've acquired over your life to help you along. You need to trust that you have those and they're available for you. And you also need to trust your equipment. Uh, you, you trust that your boots are not going to break. You trust your backpack and your clothing and all that is going to support you along the way. And so choosing the right equipment in business, it might look like picking the right software to use that's going to make things easier and save you time or, uh, you know, maybe hiring the right people. I guess that's more of an analogy of who's on your team to hike up the mountain, who's in the van before you even go. Maybe that's the analogy there, but learning to get the right equipment and trust your equipment can be really important. Because this was a 10 hour journey, we took lots of breaks and we actually knew based on there was you know four different forest ecosystems along the way, we were able to separate the volcano into four different zones. And we sort of set the goal, like each time we moved from one forest to the next, we'd take a break. And there was also different waypoints along the way, like getting to the temple, getting to the spring where we could get water, getting to the top. These are smaller goals along the way to the greater goal, which is to summit the mountain and return safely. And so breaking up your large objectives into smaller objectives that you can sort of stop and rest and uh, celebrate is really important in business because business is a long-term proposition. As soon as you hit one stage of your business goals, right, you'll probably keep going. Most entrepreneurs, it's it's a lifestyle. It's a multi-year, multi-decade long process, not just a I'm going to start a business and in three months sell it and get rich and um, I'll be done because it's something that that entrepreneurs love to do. And so thinking about it in a long term, you know, I want to keep my energy up for over years and, and in the volcano, I want to keep my energy up over hours. So how often do I need to be eating, drinking, taking a rest, taking a breather, you know, maybe it's every 20 minutes you're taking a five minute break so that you can finish 10 hours really strong. A couple of the things about the the mindset piece is we were sweaty and getting bit by mosquitoes and slipping and falling sometimes and getting muddy and sometimes getting rained on. Things that would make you uncomfortable if you let them. And so it really depends on how you choose to react to your situation because a lot of people, their favorite part was slipping in the mud because it's something they don't get to use, get to do that often. And, and they were trusting their own physical strength and that was enjoyable to them. And so uh, you choose if something is joyful or fun or exciting. It might be just the difference if you're caught in a rainstorm in the mud, whether you 
choose to enjoy the experience or whether you choose to be grumpy about it. And when you're doing something very challenging, like making sure you don't slip and fall off the mountain, you're forced to be present when you're stretching the limits of your abilities. And this is, this is when we find flow in business as well. When you're doing something that's stretching the limits of your skills and you're bringing everything you have to bear, you're utterly present. Some of that's the, the times when we, when we grow, when we really enjoy what we're doing, when we feel alive and time slows down and has no meaning. And we find ourselves really appreciating the state of flow. And that comes from giving yourself a challenge that's, that's just right. It's not too hard so that you want to give up. It's not too easy so that you get bored. So it's got to be just a little bit past your skill level. And finally, now that we've all summited this mountain, we, we finished this 10-hour trek, this huge journey. We've climbed this volcano that not very many people climb at all. It's not very popular because it's in the middle of nowhere in Bali, and it's really, really hard. Probably more people climb Everest than this mountain. And we've all achieved this together, the whole group that went up there, and now it's in our back pocket. Every time we need to, to get a confidence boost, we know that we've done something really hard. And the next thing we do is maybe could be even more challenging and even harder. Each time you do something, it becomes the hardest thing you've ever done. And then all the other things are much easier. And so you have this, this backlog of, of all these challenges you faced, of all these things you've accomplished that, that build this foundation of confidence for yourself. And you can always fall back on that. You can always rely on the things that you've accomplished so far. So I'm sure there are some more uh, analogies that I didn't mention. And maybe if you've gone some hikes or climbed a mountain or gone rock climbing or climbed a volcano, you've made some analogies for yourself, for your own life. Uh, would love to hear those. Feel free to leave those in the comments on the show notes or on iTunes when you leave a comment or a review for the show on there. And maybe you would like to experience climbing a volcano or going on one of these adventure challenges with us on the next adventure quest. So stay tuned. We are planning a trip, an adventure quest in Ireland, spring 2019, and there will be adventure quests going forwards. And of course, I encourage you to go with your friends, even with your business team out on a hike, go climb a mountain, go do something adventurous together and talk about this stuff as well. It can give you such great perspective simply to be working on business problems outside or simply to reframe your thinking when you're out for a walk or out in the woods. So thanks for joining me on this adventure analogy today. Now it's your turn to go out there and be adventurous. <laughs> <laughs>